unique is that we um, we truly customize. We aren't a cookie cutter operation. We we have processes. We have policies. Can you please give us a brief background about BBO Premier? Um, it started in 2002. 2002. Yeah. A little bit history. Okay, so uh, Premier BPO started in, in, in 2002 um, by a, a gentleman named Mark Briggs. Mark's claim to fame was actually he was the CEO of a major company that I'm sure you've heard of in the BPO industry, Cytel. So he's the uh, CEO of that. He started it in, in, with a different vision. Um, there was lots of big BPOs serving Fortune 500 companies. He started with a vision of serving mid-sized clients and thinking that mid-sized clients can also get the same benefit of the innovation, best practices, and technology that the big guys are getting, which at the time was not happening for smaller or, or mid-sized uh, organizations. Um, started in the U.S but with the entire model built on uh, uh, offshore delivery with labor arbitrage. So the first operation was um, in uh, uh, Pakistan, uh, in Lahore, Pakistan in 2002. Um, uh, two years later in 2005, opened up an operation in uh, China. Uh, started off in Beijing and then moved to Kunshan, which is just out of Shanghai. Both of these operations were more back office than call center. Premier BPO um, had a whole you know, gap in its uh, capability by not really having a you know, great English voice capability, and so the obvious choice was to um, come to the Philippines. And uh, so that happened in 2008. The uh, company um, for a while had modest growth, but a great reputation for doing really good work for our clients. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the retention rate and the tenure of the clients is, is impressive. We've always had great uh, satisfaction um, uh, scores from our clients, but it's been modest growth um, uh, for a while. Um, in the uh, last two years, uh, you know, there's been an evolution at the um, executive level, and most recently, Ali has joined within the last year. Um, Ali has brought uh, new vision, new ideas, uh, new thoughts from some leading edge companies in, in the U.S. from some of his experience. Um, in addition to some thought leadership, we've also invested some more money into the company and we've invested some more uh, passion and rigor. Um, and this has paid off in that we've had a lot of its, you know, growth um, in the last year and a half. Um, and that growth in a positive way has, uh, you know, uh, mandated that we uh, have run out of capacity at our f other facility, which was here in Eastwood, and has brought us to this facility, um, which we're you know very excited about. Um, we are, I mean, to run know who we who we are, um, we are a mid-sized player, and we say that very proudly. But we are a player that has the best practices of the really big guys. So we think we're the the best of both worlds. You know, we know there's some really big guys out there and who pitch, you know, have clients of a thousand seats, and there's some mom and pop boutiques who have clients of five, ten seats. We're a mid-sized player with the expertise and the talents and the tools of the big guys that, that can serve, you know, the the, the mid-sized market, if, if that makes sense. How are uh, your company wants to grow uh, here in the Philippines? Like, uh, are you like? From one um, yeah, future plan, yeah. Yeah, well, so we continue we continue to grow as a, an overall company in all of our locations, but the Philippines is very key and strategic for us, as evidenced by the investment that we just made in, into this new facility. Um, I was uh, telling um, uh, the uh, the mayor's representative uh, uh, today, you know, when we when we talk to people in the U.S. The, the Philippines has um, evolved over the last 20 years that it's become so accepted. Uh, I feel like it's a 51st state as far as culturally and acceptance by the U.S. You know, 20 years ago, people would say, oh, Philippines offshore, I don't know. Now it's like, I don't want to go to India. I don't want to go to a different country or that country, including sometimes Pakistan and China. I want to go to the Philippines. So it's important to us. 
the Philippines is important because it's a part, part of our mix. Um, it's important, that, you know, the voice quality we talked about, um, the diversity of uh, uh, schools and education that we can get here, um, the work ethic, and um, you know, we, we're, we're believers. I mean, I, I tell people all the time in the U.S., all the world's cruise ships are staffed by Filipinos. You know, so many nurses are exported from uh, the Philippines. So we understand the customer service mentality that, that's, that's here. And um, so uh, the Philippines is very, very key and important to us. For my question, anyone can answer. Uh, is there any like setback difficulties that you're encountering uh, with regards to managing the business here? Uh, Again, I, I'm going to reiterate that, first of all, I want to make sure if this is you know, published, you know, we are very, very excited about current and future of Philippines. Being transparent, nothing I don't think that other people in the industry haven't talked about, all of our colleagues. You know, it's uh, um, a, a question about how the government you know, interacts and you know, does or doesn't mandate the work from home, which is very important to us to be able to have that as part of our capability. But you know whether we're, you know they mandate to, to have to come back or not. That's a concern. Um, uh, how much the government gets involved in that or not? And I know that our other EPO colleagues feel the same way. And I, I can add, you know, to that flavor. So the work from home is not just something that's happening in the Philippines. It's obviously happening around the world. And some of the things that we're facing is. In, in our industry, it's very competitive to hire the, the people with the right skills and bring them on. So there's an acquisition challenge of making people feel comfortable and wanting to join our company versus another company, what we offer versus what another company offers, and then a retention issue of making sure that people are happy and they don't find out that there's some other benefit that they're missing out on at another company. And some of the things that we're finding is not only do you know, very highly skilled people just say, define the terms. They say, I, if you want me, I'm going to be working from home. I'm just not going to join otherwise. Other people are, are even at, even when we say, okay, we'll figure out the work from home, but we would like you to come in for training just for two weeks. And at that point, they refuse. They say, I'm not even going to come in for training for two weeks. I'm only going to work from home. Uh, and so it's a, it's a very significant challenge. And we're trying to, you know, figure out a solution to it. And I think a lot of other companies are trying to find solutions to it. Uh, we want to be able to work within the parameters that, you know, we're getting benefits from PESA. We're getting, ben you know, working with uh, IBPAP and American Chamber of Commerce, and, and everyone's working together to try to solve this. Uh, but it's definitely a very real challenge, and uh, we feel like for the, you know, the Philippines has worked so hard to become the place for outsourcing, and this could be actually a defining moment to determine how well it retains that title uh, versus other countries where it's completely work from home, it's completely remote because the challenge, the, 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 the reality is that there's technology today, there's companies out there that make it so easy for you to find freelancers in any country, any time, any talent they want. So it's, it's really critical that we're able to offer the right kind of uh, um, compelling reasons for someone to, to work for us and, and to stay with us. Actually, how's this, the recruitment so far since you you started with this um, new, new site? Mm -hmm. uh, this this new site. Okay. okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. So for the recruitment part, we are very excited because we were able to, um, at this point in time, we already experienced the headcount growth of about twelve to twelve percent. So that's good because. We're able to attract talents that we need in the accounts that we will we are going to or we are currently having, and the the, the future accounts that will be coming in. So we're we're very excited about recruitment, and we uh, we have a very good recruitment team that is handling our um, process. So uh, we are looking forward to growing still the the company. So in terms of moving to this. Cent this this new building as compared to the old one like it just like shows how big of a deal that is like oh my god they own a space in you know Accenture and Mega World that that's a big thing so when they enter for an interview process and they see everything that we have here that just gives them a little like confidence like oh I want to be part of this team it looks really and the best part of being 
the best the best part of being part of our company is the family culture um, you would be surprised that majority of our employees have more than seven years of tenure and it's surprising because if you know BPO you would hear often um, like call center hopping people just move like a year or six months down the road and then I'm off off to go because they want they want to, to gain more money to gain more experience to put more companies in their resume but that doesn't you know that doesn't work here because they value the the tiny community that we have we know them by their first name we because of this this growth so that's that's from a recruitment we get our pool majority of the yeah, it's a huge chunk right the yeah. referral program we get that from our from our uh, employees employees word of mouth so yeah. they have they have cousins they have friends they have colleagues from other they bring them here yeah. is it okay uh, if you could describe a little bit about the your new office like how many square meter does it occupy how how many um, person can get uh, you know, accommodate. Um, accommodate, what's the facilities? So, this is as you've seen, it's a brand new facility for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we have around 2,500 square meter area. Mm -hmm. uh, we have around uh, 400 workstations. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we have a brand new gaming room for our employees, mm -hmm. a pantry. We're planning to have employees' lounge, a quiet area where can just a, our employees can go and relax. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're also planning to have a, a, a meditation room where people can go and do yoga or just relax mm -hmm. for a few minutes while they are uh, stressed out in their day work and all that. So, uh, and also uh, we are we are planning to uh, bring a, maybe a, a masseuse. I mean, you will be surprised to hear that. Mm -hmm. uh, not not many companies do that. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about it. Maybe sure. maybe we'll ask a masseuse to come here once a month or twice a month. And just to make our employees a little bit more connected, more relaxed. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's about it for part of a new facility. Uh, last question for me is, where can I apply? <laughs> so, okay, it's, it's your time to shine me. Okay, so for, um, we would like to invite everyone to uh, apply in Premier BPO. Uh, we are a growing company. And for those who will be interested, please send in your resume to team at premierbpo.com and we'll certainly get back to you um, within the day to process your application. That's how fast. We do one day processing. Um, you can also reach us via our Facebook page. Um, you send us a message and then we will, typically we respond yeah. um, within the day and then we initiate the process. Now from a hiring process standpoint, there's a three point process. So initial screening is done by our HR recruitment team, um, followed by operations awesome. validation. And then I'm in charge of the final validation. So um, I get to decide if they are fit for the, for the client that we are hiring for. Um, and that closes the loop of our hiring process, making sure that we bring in the right talent for the right um, account. Um, la last question from me. What's unique with um, being, uh, BPO Premier? So, I'm Premier sorry. Premier. What's unique What's about What's unique about, unique about Premier? You, okay. Unique is that we, um, we truly customize. We are a cookie cupper operation. We, we have processes, we have policies, but we really tailor each team, it's not a shared team, each dedicated team adopts and gets immersed in the client's processes and understands their, the client's cultures, their processes, and it's really a team within a team, and we truly believe that. So a lot, there's a lot of really good BPOs in Manila, lots and lots and lots of them, and you go in and they, they've got this way to do it, and that way to do it, and this way to do it. We work with each one of our clients to create a customized, immersed methodology. One perfect example of a client that we work with that we did t tailor fit that for, for their needs and actually saved them tons of money from um, incorrect processing of payments. So that's, that's we are bringing them value of, hey, we're not just doing the job that you ask us, but we will tell you how else you can improve the process by, you know, partnering with them, understanding the needs, and that's precisely um, the the growth with that 
with that um, client that we have, which recommended us with different clients too, um, because of the, the value for um, the service. They, they love us. We are even better than their internal, meaning the U.S., their internal agents um, based from the survey that they have conducted. Um, our Pakistan team was number one, and then our Philippines team is number two. Now, in PK, we have their technical support, which has more surveys, and then here we do all, like customer service, data entry, um, technical support, right. scheduling, so, so yeah. It's, it's really about customization, is the answer to your question. Thank you, sir, and congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.